Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Atomoscope webinar. Um, well, it must be a pretty clear. Uh, today we have a webinar uh, about uh, Atomoscope, and uh, our uh, guest speaker is uh, uh, Rob van der Horst uh, from uh, Smurver Kappa. Uh, Smurver Kappa is a is a Dutch company, uh, and uh, Rob van der Horst is a integration specialist uh, at, the, at the company and they are um, well yeah some early users of the of the products uh, so we felt like uh, it would be a good idea to have them explain how they are using uh, atomoscope in their day-to-day -day operations uh, so most of the this webinar uh, well, uh, Rob will explain uh, about all their scenarios about how they uh, use atomoscope in their uh, environment um, and now I forgot to move to that to the next slide. So there was already a little bit of a special an, an introduction to, uh, to to Rob. Uh, well, my name is uh, Lex Hecht. Uh, I'm also from the Netherlands, and I'm a lead product consultant for uh, both Pistar 360 and uh, and Atomoscope. Uh, let's move on to the agenda for today. Uh, clearly, we have uh, the insight from a small Smurf Kappa, uh, which is done uh, by uh, by Rob. Next, we are also going to focus uh, on the roadmap, I must say, of uh, version 8.1. Uh, and there will be a fairly important uh, feature in, in 8.1 that we are going to discuss uh, here uh, in short, at, uh, at least. Uh, and of course, there will also be uh, room for, for Q&A. And it must be said that the Q&A section will have it immediately uh, after uh, Rob's uh, uh, presentation. Um, so I think um, that's it for uh, for today. Um, yeah, uh, Rob, uh, over to you. I think. Yes, thanks, Alex. Um, yeah, I'm. Uh, my name is uh, Rob van der Horst. Um, I'm integration specialist uh, at uh, Smurf Kappa for about four years uh, now. Um, uh, the first two years, I was mainly busy with uh, creating uh, interfaces for the for the business. Uh, the last two years, uh, I was mainly busy at uh, with working for improvements uh, to our integration platform. Um, so now we are on the slide of Smurf Kappa. I will, for the people who don't know uh, Smurf Kappa, I will explain a little bit what we uh, what we are doing. Uh, Smurf Kappa is a worldwide organization which produces paper and packaging solutions for different uh, industries uh, like healthcare, automotive, but most recognizable for you are the retail and uh, delivery packages, as uh, you can see in the, in the slide. Um, Smurf Kappa has about uh, 242 uh, packaging conversation plants, which produces the uh, packaging uh, solutions. We have about uh, 34 paper mills, which creating paper solutions for the business as well as for the uh, packaging conversion plants. About 46 recycling plants and wood procurement. And on top of that, we have 34 other production facilities. Um, so the Kappa has about 350 uh, production sites around the world with uh, 23 countries in Europe and uh, 13 countries in uh, in the Americas. So that's uh, a good introduction uh, of, uh, of Smurf Kappa. Um, okay. um, Lex, I can't move to the next page. <laughs> okay, I don't know. Can you try again? Oh, of course, I did it already, but. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, we missed yeah. uh, we missed the topics which I want to discuss. So I've told yeah, you sure. already about uh, about Smurf Kappa. Um, I will also tell in this presentation about uh, why uh, why we have chosen for Atomoscope. Uh, I will give you an overview of the inter integration architecture we have uh, in place, and then we go to the functional part of the uh, configuration of Atomoscope. Uh, uh, in, in the portal. Then I will tell you uh, more uh, about the technical implementation, like uh, the pipeline component and the orchestration, because we uh, only use Atomoscope for the uh, in, in the BizTalk uh, platform. 
And then I will also uh, uh, handle uh, the field message routing and the reprocess solution strategies we, uh, we are using. Um, and uh, the next part will be then about the integration number to give you a high level overview of uh, uh, the messaging process uh, of our platform. And as Alex already mentioned, uh, the last slide will be uh, for my presentation, for my part, uh, the questions. Yeah, so indeed, if anybody has any questions, uh, you can leave them in the in the question and answers uh, pane, and we will address them uh, after uh, Rob's presentation. Yes. So uh, this slide we already uh, have done. So I will move to the to the next slide. Um, why Atomoscope? Um, before we started with uh, uh, Atomoscope, we had and we still have uh, a highly customized version of the ESB toolkit uh, in place in our integration platform. This implementation of the uh, ESB is running as a monitoring and archiving tool for supporting the, uh, the business process. The ESB toolkit has been marked as a, as a legacy tool. It, uh, it is old uh, and it contains also uh, components which are marked internally as a, as a security risk. So then the question raised, uh, are we going to develop uh, a new tool internally uh, as a replacement of the ESB or are we going to buy a tool? So uh, in 2018, uh, on the uh, Integrate uh, Congress hosted by COVI, they introduced uh, Atomoscope as a new monitoring solution for uh, integration platforms uh, like BizTalk, uh, <clears throat> and they give a, a presentation uh, of it. Uh, based on uh, the demo and the information, uh, we knew that this product had, uh, had the potential to uh, replace our legacy uh, ESP toolkit uh, solution. Because the project was at that time very young, I guess they were about uh, version 3.0. Uh, they presented uh, during the uh, Congress. Uh, we hoped also uh, by joining uh, or by getting Atomoscope that we could bring in some uh, feature requests to get uh, the functionality of Atomoscope more closer to, uh, to our ESB toolkit uh, implementation. And the last uh, reason to, to choose for Atomoscope uh, is that it was already feature ready. So, uh, Cloud solutions like uh, Azure Logic Apps uh, will also be possible to, to monitor with uh, Atomoscope. Um, at this moment, we are not uh, uh, using any cloud solutions for our integration platform. But when we start that journey, uh, Atomoscope is, uh, is ready for it. So that's uh, that are the main reasons uh, for choosing Atomoscope. Um, the integration architecture. Before diving into the functional and technical implementation of uh, Atomoscope, uh, first I want to show you our architecture with the implementation of Atomoscope uh, to our production environment. Um, we have uh, in place uh, in two data centers. Uh, we have one web server which is uh, hosting uh, uh, the Atomoscope portal. We have uh, three uh, SQL servers uh, in a cluster to get the data layer high available, as you can uh, as you can see here. Uh, also uh, divided on the uh, on the data centers, and we have uh, two Vista servers uh, 2016 running, uh, which are single nodes, uh, which are load balanced to. Uh, uh, an H2 load balancer to get the uh, integration platform uh, high available. Um, 
the configuration of atomic scope. This will be the, the, the functional part of uh, configuring uh, atomic scope uh, in, in, the, in the portal. Topics I want to discuss uh, are the business process, the transactions, the stages, and uh, the, uh, the monitoring uh, alerts. Um, in this slide, in, in yeah, this okay. slide, the uh, you can uh, see the uh, uh, configuration of the uh, the, the configuration of the scope contains about uh, contains a tracked item. Uh, the tracked item is uh, contains all the monitored information from the whole messaging process. So when you receive a message, you do do the stuff uh, in between and of sending out uh, the item that uh, is uh, named in a uh, atomoscope a tracked item. Uh, in the tracked item you can configure uh, a business process and uh, the business process uh, is a container to separate all your uh, different uh, internal processes. We have configured the business process with uh, internal processes like corrugated paper, recycle, Etc. Um, <clears throat> each uh, business process consists of one or more uh, transactions. Kobe.com.